perhaps one of the most infamous pieces in the British collection in terms of jewelry, and it's one that's been worn by the queen and one of her favorites throughout her reign. And it is King George IV's diadem that he wore to his coronation and has been worn by every queen, consort, and ruler since. And it's become such a famous piece because it's on so many pieces of currency and it's one of Her Majesty's absolute favorites to wear as well. And in honor of her 70 years on the throne, this diadem will be going on display at Buckingham Palace, I believe. It might be Windsor Castle, but it's going on display soon. So if you are in London and want to see that, you can definitely check it out. It's a one-of-the-kind piece and I'll just be going over a little bit of history of it today on Tiara Tuesday. Yes, I know I haven't done as many Tiara Tuesdays as I've wanted to do. Things have been really busy. I'm actually changing jobs and so I have to kind of move a bit and stuff. So things have been just a little bit crazier than I anticipated. So some of these longer pieces like research pieces take a little bit more time to kind of look through. So I wanted to make sure that I was able to do that. And so, but I wanted to cover this today because I will be going in the next two weeks. So on May 31st, I will be in London. I'm so excited. I'll be there for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee and I I'm just thrilled and so two weeks from today I will be in London and it'll be fantastic. I'll be super tired and I will have a, um, a lot of jet lag but I will be so, I'm, gonna, I'm so stoked to be there. And guys, I'll have more information coming out about my trip here pretty soon. I just wanna firm up a couple of things before I just kinda share with you guys some additional information about it. So if you guys haven't been to Royal News Network before, my name is Brittany and we go over kind of everything related to royals. So I do a lot of commentaries on things kinda going on within the various royal families. I do, you know, news, gossip, fashion, jewelry, like today, television shows, movies, and history. We'll do it all here. And so this channel just continues to grow. So if you want to subscribe, that would be great. I would love to have you back. And like I said, today we are talking about one of the creme de la creme pieces within the British collection. And that is King George IV's diadem. So this was initially created in 1820 at the request of King George IV for his coronation. It took a couple months for them to build this beautiful piece and they got it together and he actually wore it to his coronation. They had to hold it back. Uh, they had to pull it back a little bit because there was kind of some there was a trial with his wife, Caroline, which I really want to look into now because I, did, I didn't know that much, but there was a trial with his wife, Caroline, and so he had this diadem created. And since it kind of went into the British collection, it has become a staple part. It was actually on the first stamp ever produced. It was actually a portrait of Queen Victoria. And if you look at the, if you look at the stamp, you're like, well, I don't really see it. But yes, it was on the first, like it doesn't look quite like the diadem. But hey, you know what? It was a bit of artistic license, but was on the first stamp ever. And this piece has been in the British collection ever since, and it's become really a staple part of the Queen's wardrobe and one of her favorite pieces to wear. And there's actually a short little video here of her actually putting it on her head herself, and she kind of, you know, manages it, trying to get it together. And usually the Queen wears this to the state opening a parliament, and if she, once she gets there, she usually changes into the imperial crown, which is much heavier. I believe that thing weighs about five pounds. It has one of the biggest diamonds in the world in it. It has a huge ruby, so it's a very, very heavy piece. And usually it gets its own car or carriage to the state opening of parliament and back, which is kind of crazy. Sadly, this year we did not get to see the queen wearing this diadem. She has been struggling with mobility issues and kind of at the last minute she asked her son, Prince Charles, read her speech and Prince William went as well. And this is kind of the first time he's gotten to go to this event. And so it is kind of showing how the monarchy is kind of in this period of a little bit of transition. And so it's kind of great to see, but kind of concerning to see as well. But this piece is just incredibly impressive. And so let me just kind of read to you some of what makes up this beautiful tiara. Well, it's a diadem, not a tiara, because it goes all the way around. And it was actually, it was actually made for a man, but actually mostly it's been women who've worn it. So the next woman we will see with it is perhaps Camilla, or she could decide to retire it just because it's so closely associated with the queen. And it could perhaps be Catherine, who's the next woman we see wearing this piece, which would be super interesting. But let me give you some of the details on it. So it has four crosses um, pate with, with set with uh, diamonds representing St. George. So it's the St. George's cross. So you see those, those crosses around the diadem. 
In between there is uh, bouquets incorporating roses, which represents England, thistles, which represents Scotland, and shamrocks, which represents Ireland. The emblems of the United Kingdom, the diamond scroll work band re remounted for Queen Alexandra in 1902, is framed between two rows of pearls, 81 in the upper row and 88 in the lower. And this actually piece actually became a huge, so I got that from this book, the Queen's Jewels. So this is a book actually published in the 80s and it used to be at my library. And I actually, when I started this channel, I decided to go ahead and order it because I remember actually, so it's mostly in black and white, but it has a lot of like detail and it has some great pictures as well of the Queen's collection. And I kind of like this, it's just kind of remembrance. I actually took like photocopies out of this because when I was in high school, I actually did a report on the Cullinan diamond, which I will do a video on that at some point. But yes, I have always been a bit of a nerd for royals and diamonds. What can I say? And this diadem also became very infamous with kind of Queen Victoria. She wore it quite a bit. She was, she really enjoyed wearing it because it's kind of a simple piece because some of these tiaras, depending on kind of how they're made and stuff, they can be either very firm and rigid or very flexible. And the more flexible a tiara is or the easier you can kind of put it on your head, the easier it is to wear. And circlets kind of represent a unique challenge. There's one in actually Sweden, it's actually an amethyst one with huge amethysts on it. And I believe it could be, you know, dismounted and worn as a necklace as well, but the ladies keep it as a tiara. But it's actually a circlet, which makes it kind of much harder to wear. And it just kind of often looks odd on the women. But actually the person who wore it the best, I think was Princess Madeline, who kind of did it kind of half up. So it kind of went and her hair actually flowed over half of it. So it kind of looked like it was a regular tiara and her hair was hiding actually the back half of it. So those are kind of, so, they are kind of easier to wear, but they can also wear, look awkward. This one in particular, I think is quite gorgeous the way it's laid out. And kind of the central piece of it is a four carat yellow diamond, although some people call it honey colored. It's just absolutely beautiful. It kind of in the sea of kind of whiteness of the diamonds and the pearls, gives it that little bit of splash and touch of color, which I think is great. And what's interesting about this piece as well is that it was actually, so the diamonds in it were originally just rented. So at the time when the British Royal family needed like a lot of diamonds for something, they asked the jeweler, jeweler and they rented the diamonds. We actually see this now with celebrities. So when celebrities go to the Oscars, the Emmys, the Golden Globes, even the Met Gala, they're oftentimes being loan the pieces so they're not you know putting down money to rent them and that's what the British would do at the time but they are being loaned the pieces with the expectation that as soon as you walk out of the venue the security guard is going to go ah uh, uh, you know from Cartier or you know Tiffany or something like gonna be like ah uh, I need that back please <laughs> and that's how that works just to make sure that you know, oftentimes they couldn't maybe afford everything because the British monarchy has gone through times of boon and times of bust. And so they, they rented the pieces initially, the diamonds, but however, it was a very delicate setting. And so they decided to go ahead and purchase them outright. And so it has just remained within the monarchy ever since. And it just has, again, just such a beautiful and classic design. I should mention as well that the King George the Force diadem, 1,133 diamonds as well. So it truly is an absolutely beautiful piece. Her Majesty wore this actually for the first time to the state opening of Parliament when she was before even her coronation as queen. And she also wore it as she was going to her coronation as queen. And what's kind of interesting to know as well is that Prince Charles actually explained a little bit about the diadem in a video. So check out this little clip here. One of the things my great, great, great great uncle George IV had designed specially for the coronation was this circlet of diamonds. He, uh, he may have uh, worn it in the earlier part of the ceremony in Westminster Abbey. And of course, I think in those days when he wore it, it would probably have had a, a purple cap inside it, which would have made it more like a crown than what it is now when it is in fact a tiara. I do think it's both elegant and very beautiful. It's made up of, um, of diamonds set in silver and gold, and uh, the crosses here alternate uh, with the emblems of the three kingdoms. And you can see here the, the rose of England, and uh, the thistle of Scotland, and here the uh, shamrock of Ireland. There's no leak, unfortunately, because uh, Wales is a principality and not a kingdom. 
Since George IV's time, no man has ever worn it. It was worn by Queen Victoria, and now the present Queen wears it on the journey to and from the opening of Parliament. I suppose it's too theatrical, really, to be worn by a modern king, but George IV obviously loved dressing up. So guys, this truly is a just a deeply historic piece. Like I said, it was featured on the first stamp ever used, and it has become really a staple part of the British monarchy. And the next queen consort we should see this tiara on, or this diadem, is Camilla. When she becomes queen consort, whenever the queen passes away, she will most likely wear this piece. If she decides not to for some reason, obviously there is a very close association between the queen and this particular diadem. And Camilla, although her popularity has grown, she's not quite as popular as the queen nor Catherine. And so she could decide, you know, maybe it's best to stick that one at home. And so beyond that, the next person we will see it on as well is Catherine. However, I will add a bit of a caveat. Since, you know, it is the 21st century and everything, I think some of the, and I hope this doesn't happen, but it could happen, that some of the pomp and circumstance kind of, you know, dies down a little bit with the monarchy and, you know, they don't bring out these gigantic pieces quite as much anymore. Perhaps it goes on a permanent display or something like that. I really hope that's not the case because again, this piece has kind of a beautiful history and just has great symbology to it as well. And it's something that can be worn, you know, just very easily and very regally. And it, I think it would be excellent to see it on Catherine. Can't wait to see what she does. And actually just in general. So the Queen of E is not very well known for a uh, her taste in tiaras. The, own, the ones that she has made herself are kind of generally kind of, you know, head scratchers a bit. They're just not quite as beautiful as some of the other pieces that she has that were done under Queen Mary, who was kind of well known for her fantastic taste in jewelry. So it'll be interesting to see how Camilla and then Catherine kind of really revamps the TR collection and just the jewels in general within the British monarchy, especially since the queen has gotten older, you know, we don't see a lot of pieces anymore. We don't, you know, see them kind of mixed up a bit in a different way. What's kind of fun about young royals in particular is that oftentimes they kind of have a lot more fun with the jewelry that they have. You know, they, Diana did this as well. You know, one time she forgot to bring a tiara, so she took a bracelet or a necklace and put it on her head. And you know, a lot of the other royal families do that as well. A lot of the younger women oftentimes try to have a bit more fun with the pieces in their collection. Some of them are very, you know, static, so th there's not much you can do the, to them. But others you can and so I hope we see Catherine especially really kind of revamp and just kind of have a lot of fun with the royal collection because I think that would be just fantastic to see. I'm super excited to see her do that because I can't wait to see a lot of these pieces come out of the vault, ho hopefully, like the Strathmore Rose tiara, which it looks always beautiful, but ha we've been told is too delicate to take out. I hope we see that more. But guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a little bit about King George IV and his desire to make this kind of diadem. He also, I forgot to mention that he also, because he wore this to his coronation, he also had kind of a... Um, a velvet topper to it as well. So some of the more brilliant aspects of the piece were kind of lost within this purple topper that he had with an ostrich feather. But this tier, this diadem will go on display in the next couple months and will be on display until October 2nd. And so if you are in the UK after it, I believe it goes on display sometime in June or July, but it's not like you can't go and see it while you're at the Jubilee, which kind of aggravates me because <laughs> I was really hoping because they're having these huge kind of openings of like the Queen's coronation outfit, you know, this, the King George diadem, they're kind of opening these, some exhibits up to the public, but only after the Jubilee. And I'm like, come on guys, I'm coming here for the Jubilee. And in part, I wanted to see those as well. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I plan on doing more of these, but you know, and I'd want to do them every other week, but next week, you know, and again, lots going on, changing jobs and everything, so I probably won't get to it. And then you got the week after that, I will be in the UK. So hopefully I can even show you, I think there's some tiaras on display in, uh, I believe it's either Kensington Palace or what's the other? But anyways, guys, I will be doing, getting you guys lots of coverage and I can't wait to do it. And I can't wait to show all the, you know, kind of behind the scenes and those sorts of things. And I'll have more announcements coming soon. So thank you again for watching and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.